Hey, morning. An interesting question was asked by uh, Sherwan on my video 53 just a few weeks ago where I was talking about Agile, criticizing Agile, and he asked me what is the better framework, which I suggest for a team of five to eight people, a small startup, so how to make a, you know, a better management model instead of Agile. Of course, my recommendation is to go for bureaucracy, for microtasking. But I do realize that small teams of 5 eight people, uh, which are used to work in a traditional model for years, cannot just switch immediately to microtasking. And I've seen that many times. Many people come to me, friends of mine. I just had a conversation just three days ago with a friend of mine. And uh, he's a manager. He's an owner of a software team. And he's got like up to 10 programmers, if I remember correctly, and all of them are full-timers. They, they work in the office, some of them remotely, but they are full-timers. And he got interested in the, in the bureaucracy, in microtasking. I was explaining him for like an hour of uh, how great it is when people work on microtasking modes, how they are motivated, how we can control quality much better, how everything is great, how we spend less money getting more results, and people are motivated because they get more money for the same amount of time, the same amount of effort they, they spend. Uh, but then he started to ask me, like, what's the next step? So what do I do in order to, to start using bureaucracy? And I realized that it's not so easy. You know, you cannot just uh, convert your existing team and convince your programmers that starting tomorrow you will use microtasking and I'm not going to pay you monthly salaries anymore and you will just, uh, you know, get money for, for the microtasks. That's a, that's a huge step forward, which you cannot just make in one increment. You need to go there step by step incrementally or you just fire everybody and get a new, completely new team, completely new team of freelancers on the bureaucracy platform. But my friend already has a team of people, so he cannot just get rid of them all because that's too risky for the business. So what's, what are those increments? That's why I'm recording the video to suggest you uh, a few steps which you can follow if you want to make that transition, if you want to uh, get your team ready for microtasking. And that will take some time. So there are five steps which I'm suggesting you taking. Five increments, five things you can change, you can improve in your team. And in some time, in a few months, maybe in a few years, the team will ready for a full microtasking mode. And then you can come to bureaucracy and let your programmers work according to our policy. The step number one, let them work in GitHub. Let them keep the code there because many teams are not doing that. In many teams, people are, you know, having their private code repositories and they have no ticket tracking system. I would strongly recommend to move to GitHub. GitHub is a great platform for maintaining the code and they have a really powerful and simple ticket tracking system. So you have your programmers, they're full timers. It's okay. Just let them keep the code, make them keep the code in GitHub. Just force them to do that. Just tell them starting tomorrow, we're going to keep everything in GitHub and we're going to have tickets in GitHub. So create your logins there. We're going to communicate there through tickets. Just let's move there. That's the step number one. Move to GitHub. No matter what platform you're using now, you may be using like Bitbucket or any other clones of GitHub. Just forget that. Move to GitHub. That's my strong recommendation. Step number two, we need to move your programmers to the understanding of tickets, of tasks specified in tickets. Most programmers are used to work in the continuous mode. I just get into the office in the morning, I open my laptop, I work, it's a lunch time, I have lunch, I work again, it's end of the day, I go home. This is what I do. I work until the day is over. We need to change that mentality. We need to uh, help them understand that from now on they have to work ticket by ticket. Not from 9 till 5, but from the beginning of the ticket till the end of the ticket. How we can do that? I'm suggesting asking them. Uh, to send a summary email by the end of the week, say on Friday, to everybody with a list of tickets which I was working with. So if I'm a programmer, starting tomorrow, I have to list everything I was able to close, all the tickets I was able to close, and email everybody a short summary of my, of my work by the end of the week, on Friday. So if you have five programmers, you're going to receive five emails on Friday. In each email, you will have a list of tickets GitHub tickets, which they will be able to close. Close, not working on, like I was working on ticket 5, ticket 11, ticket 7. No, I closed ticket 5, I closed ticket 11, and I closed ticket 7. 
don't pay them for tickets for now. Don't call them micro tasks, no matter how big or small those tickets are. But train them to understand that their weak result is a list of closed tickets. That's what they need to understand. That will take time. That will take months before they realize that this weekly report is a super important summary of their activity in the company. You can even ask them to send that report to everybody, like create an email, everybody. And then if I'm a programmer, I send my report and all other programmers receive my report and see what I was able to close. And of course, if you see the report with just one, two tickets, then you start complaining about that as a manager. So you start asking like, why you were working on just, why did you close only just one ticket by the end of the week? That's not enough. And they will see how many tickets other people close. And they will see that I'm closing one, two, and other people close uh, five or 10. Then I will try to catch up. And that's how they start breaking their work, their continuous work into increments and start delivering results uh, incrementally instead of continuously. That will be a huge step forward to microtasking. Step number three, try to make code reviews mandatory in your software development process code reviews. Each change to the source code has to go through a pull request in GitHub and each pull request has to have a code review in order for the code to be accepted. Most people don't do that, most teams don't do that, but that's really important for the future microtasking you're uh, aiming for. Preferably, I would suggest to just restrict their access to the master branch, so make it impossible technically to commit their code directly to the master branch. They will not be able to just continuously pushing their code while they're working, but they will have to organize their changes into sort of batches, so patches, and they submit those patches in pull requests. So that's another great step towards microtasking. They will realize that their work has to be incremental in pieces, not continuous, just I keep working and working and, and my salary keeps coming, but I deliver pieces incrementally in tickets and they finish in pull requests and then there are code reviews and my results are accepted only if the code reviewer said okay. The step number four on the road to microtasking is uh, inviting external reviewers, external experts to take a look at the code you, your guys are working on and uh, suggesting improvements or corrections or criticizing the code via tickets. So you need to find somebody who is external not local, not sitting next to your people, not in the same office and not able to communicate with them. Not somebody who can call them, who can meet with them, but find somebody who only has access to GitHub. Just give access to GitHub to some programmer on the market and ask that programmer to review the code every week or every two weeks. And when the review is done, that person has to submit tickets in GitHub, explain what's wrong. And then your programmers will start talking to that expert via GitHub. They should not have any ability to communicate with the reviewer, with this auditor, anyhow, outside of GitHub. That will train them to stop doing meetings in the office, which is an evil thing which, if we're talking about microtasking, but will train them to, to communicate in GitHub, communicate in writing, start making formal communication. That will be super important for microtasking in the future. And the final step, number five, let them work remotely let them work from home. Stop asking your programmers to come to the office. Just tell them, as long as we have the report by the end of the week, the list of tasks completed, as long as we have code reviews and we know that your code is being reviewed, as long as we communicate remotely through tickets and it works for us, so let's stop coming to the office. Let them work from home, from anywhere they want. You still have an office, they still are welcome to come, but make it a policy that they are allowed to be anywhere they want, that they're not blamed for not being in the office. That will help them to understand how microtasking works because in microtasking, of course, you don't need any offices, you just need the results delivered incrementally. So five steps to help you prepare your team for microtasking are move them to GitHub, ask them to report weekly the tasks they managed to close, uh, make sure code reviews are mandatory, invite external experts to review their code and make sure those experts communicate with them only via tickets and let them work remotely. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.